All right, welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here, diving right into the middle of the Battle of Chancellorsville. And the reason being that uh, nothing happened in the first phase. Uh, so I'll talk through a little bit of what's happening uh, now that we'll be going to the second phase of the battle here in just a second. Um, actually, we've already started that phase. So uh, let me pause for just a second. So here's what's happened. We, um, I went ahead and just played the supply raid um, without recording a video for that because I don't use any of my own troops. And so there's really no change in how that battle goes versus any other time I've played that battle. Uh, so there was no reason to make a video about that. If you want to see kind of my strategies for that, uh, there's other videos that I've made. Mainly what I decided to do this time around with that one was uh, I surrounded the initial objective uh, in supply the supply raid, uh, inflicted as many casualties on his troops as possible before taking the objective, because as soon as you take the objective, you trigger the uh, counterattack by Jeb Stewart's forces and... Uh, so the fewer forces I had to face uh, for that last phase, the better. So I, I did that. I, I inflicted a lot of casualties and then built up a good defensive line and then took the objective so I'd be ready for that. Uh, which brings me to Chancellorsville. And basically, in terms of troop numbers, uh, going into the first day of the Battle of Chancellorsville, my army was basically the same size as his. I had about a 1,000 more men than him. Uh, but that means I'm going to be overwhelmingly outnumbered here on day one. Uh, because I don't get most of my uh, forces until the second phase of the battle. So you can see right now I'm outnumbered uh, something like four and a half to one. Uh, however, my guns, when the whole army is on the field, should be about three to one in my favor. Right now it's about even. So I just got to hang on for dear life in this first phase. Uh, and then he'll probably be getting reinforcements for phase two. So I should be outnumbered in phase two. Uh, which, of course, is very unique for... The Battle of, Battle of Chancellorsville, where the Union had one of its greatest numerical advantages of any battle during the war, um, about two to one. Didn't keep them from losing, though. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sit here uh, for a while and kind of hold the position as best I can. I actually think I'm going to pull these guys back because I don't see any great advantage to sitting out here like this. I'm going to stick these sharpshooters um, actually right here. I'll drop Hobson in right there. And then that way, he's forced to come up to my main line where I've got my artillery waiting for him. My my core, my four core are all pretty evenly divided. My, my fourth core is the smallest uh, because you could only have up to, I think, 15 brigades in that last one. Again, I could have brought a bigger army into this fight, but um, as I started adding more troops, it started to scale him up. So I didn't want to go too, too far with that. I'm going to bring these guns down and get them into the main line. Although not a lot's going to happen this first day, and then everything's going to get reshuffled the second day anyway, which has always been one of my great frustrations about this game, is that you can get yourself exactly the way you want for your battle line, and then if it goes to another phase of the battle or another day of the battle, it, re it kind of shifts all your men anyway. So I'm basically just kind of hanging on and inflicting some casualties on day one here. Uh, I talk a lot about the historical Battle of Chancellorsville on my previous videos about Chancellorsville, so um, you can certainly look at those to hear me talk a little bit more about the battle. I'm mostly just going to talk about strategy and tactics for my fight on this particular one here. So you can see uh, these sharpshooters, uh, 250 of them, they've got the John Browns, the, the telescopic sights. They've already got 56 casualties inflicted without losing a man. Obviously, my artillery is going to have a wonderful day. I've got my melee, or my uh, melee, my um, smoothbore artillery up front with my rifled artillery in the rear. I think I'm going to go ahead and shift these guys over here back these guys up. And actually, since since all this stuff's going to get moved in 52 minutes anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and bring these guns down here. 
and let them get into these skirmishers here because by the time I get them all the way over here and get them in position this part of the fight's going to be over anyway I think we'll go ahead and just kind of fast forward along here because not a lot's going to happen in this opening day of the battle sharpshooters are up to 100 casualties inflicted they're getting about 15 to 20 every every time they fire. Oh, okay. Don't want to speed up quite so much. Uh, my artillery, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, this is a problem. For the love of God, get over there, guys. My artillery is about to be overrun. I just made a major mistake right there. I didn't know he was going to have a uh, brigade of infantry running right up that far. Oh my gosh, that was brutal on those 20 pounders. Just lost 70 men. In one volley. The good news is that's going to be all I'm going to lose from all of that. But he's going to back into the woods and that's going to save him. Otherwise, I'd probably wipe this brigade out completely. i got to be careful here. Although if he sucks me into the open, I'll start inflicting casualties again and then maybe even get into this battery. So maybe this isn't the worst thing in the world. Meanwhile, let's see what's going on over here. Not much. I've got plenty of supply. I'm not too worried about that. Now we're going to get these skirmishers in the open here in a second. There's another brigade of uh, infantry up here. All right, we got to back off. Engaging in the in the woods is not going to pay off for me. So, definitely some mistakes were made over here on my flank in my haste. Got myself in a little trouble, but nothing, nothing that's gonna make or break the battle so even with that debacle over there we're still looking looking good initially here I've lost 450 men inflicted about 1500 casualties If I get really, really lucky, I, I don't know if I'll do it in 15 minutes or not, but I might be able to wipe these skirmishers out. I'm just trying to use these guys to keep uh, keep his men off of my infant or off of my artillery here. minutes to go. I'm not sure I'm going to wipe these skirmishers out in time. If I had another 20 minutes, I'd probably wipe out all these skirmisher units. So. Finally got them out in the open. Alright. We'll go ahead and fast forward. We'll get to day two, and this is where, where it'll get interesting. All right, here we go. Now we're going to have to rebuild my entire uh, line of defense. And now it should be pretty even on the battlefield. Yeah, he's going to have me by about 800 men. Now, I, I suppose in theory I ought to be able to go back to camp and kind of replace some of my losses. Sir, yes, sir. But it looks like it's not going to let me do that with, uh, with these units in the first corps. That's interesting. Oh, here we go. For some reason, just not this one. Let's check our artillery. 
Make sure there's nothing I can do here. Yeah, there's a couple spots I can reinforce them. Sir, yes, sir. You can see I got plenty of money, plenty of uh, manpower. Uh, my money was actually, could have been higher, but I went in and bought up every gun that I could of every type. Um, so I bought every type of skirmisher and cavalry weapon that was available in the armory so that those would hopefully replenish after the battle. So otherwise I'd probably have more money available to me here. All right, we don't have that many left here. And go to 725. I've actually got a ton of some types of weapons available to me. Um, let me see if we can find what some of the So I've got 700 or so sharps left over. There was one that I think I had 3,000 or so. I've got telescopic sight John Browns available to me. Nothing really as far as those go. Smiths, I've got another 900. Sharps, I've got some available. Some more Frank Wessons available. 2,000 more shot, uh, sawed-off shotguns available. And I actually used a lot of those already. Um, I've got 2,700 Sharps 1855s available to me as well. So uh, a decent amount of weapons available to me. And I don't think we'll... I think three things of supplies along with the supplies that I already have at the Chancellor House are going to be enough to get through this battle. So uh, that puts me pretty much even with him. Oh, he's actually got 225 guns now. So he's brought up a lot more artillery than I thought he would have. But I've got a lot of rifled artillery, so that should help uh, with counter battery fire. So let's pause, because I'm going to have to do a lot here to get my forces where I want them. Starting with backing the heck up over here from what I know is coming from Jackson's attack. So we got to start pulling those guys back. Um, and we'll fold the fold the battle line up to like right here somewhere. Actually, yeah, we won't go back that far. Pull these guys back. I want to let him come at me with my artillery wherever possible. He's not going to probably hit me too much up here. I'm just going to find where the fortifications are and then back some of these guns up. Actually, we'll put them in right there. Pull these guys over here. I'm going to pull the 10 pounders back. There's just a lot I have to do here. Actually, there's no reason to back up quite that far. I'm going to bring these guys down right here. And then eventually maybe even to right here. Let's get the guns pulled back. No, that's not a good fortification there. I'm going to pull these 24 pounders back a little bit. Definitely pull the 20 20 pound parrots back. It's gonna take a little while to get this all sorted out the way I want it. And I'm guessing I won't encounter him for a little while. But that gives me some time to sort what I wanna do. So uh, not a lot of action gonna be happening here for just a little bit. So once these guys all get on the line, I can uh, start figuring out exactly where I want my guns to be. Okay, there's 24 pounders right here. Let's get them pointed in the right direction. Figure out where I want my melee cavalry to be. Move these 24 pounders up. Get these Napoleons up.
20 pounders are good there. Let's just get them pointed in the right direction. Okay, now let's look at all these guys. There's a lot of melee cavalry up here. In fact, I think what I'll do is pull a bunch of my melee cavalry up there and let his lines pass in front of me. Then we can have some fun when they realize that I've got melee cavalry in their rear. got two more here. I'll go ahead and pull them up there too. I'll, I'll kind of keep them all in one place at least to start. Let's get all my rifled artillery parked right on those supplies. Move these guys down here. Alright, still nothing showing up on the map. No, let's keep these 10 pounders back. Move the 12 pounders up. Got a little bit of melee cavalry there, which isn't a bad thing to have. Make sure all these guys are issuing issued hold order so they don't skirmish and then run. Got a little bit of backup here. Get these 10 pounders out of the way. All right, there's our first contact right here. And actually, hey, if we're going to make contact with anybody, let's let it be some skirmishers with my melee cavalry. Which I know probably they have infantry right behind them, but we'll take our chances. Yeah, here comes the infantry. <coughs> Excuse me. In the form of Harry Heath, who we're going to go after. All right, we, we nabbed some skirmishers of his already, but they may unsurrender when they come in contact with the other skirmishers. He's probably got help behind him, so I got to be careful here. All right, let's go ahead and draw them. Draw them out. All right, get out of here. Get out of there. Get out of there. I think we're going to form our battle line right here. Ah, uh, maybe not. Yeah, we'll start there. And then we'll fall back as needed. I've only got four units of uh, mounted infantry that I can put on that line. Let's move some skirmishers over here. Maybe move some of the artillery that way too. I don't think there's going to be a lot happening over here. Most of the attacks going to be this is this is historically Stonewall Jackson's flanking attack, which really kind of turned the tide of this battle. Of course, the difference here being that I know it's coming. These guys have shotguns, so they've got really crazy short range. We'll put the unit with the longer range in between the two. These guys have a nice long range. I 
All right, I think we're ready. Ready as we're gonna be. So let's make this happen. Plug these guys right there. We'll keep our melee cavalry actually preferably out of sight. All right, artillery's opening up. That means he's showing up somewhere. Skirmishers right there. Okay, we're gonna keep kind of a, as full a view of what's happening here as possible. He's doing his little supply thing where he pulls the supplies out there, trying to goad me into coming out after him. So for me as the Union, hold Orange Turnpike, hold Orange Plank Road uh, to get a victory, hold Chancellor Farm. Uh, those two things will be very easy to do with my cavalry once I've inflicted a lot of casualties on him and weakened his army significantly. I'm a little concerned about how weak I am on this side. I feel like there's probably more I could be doing. But I've got all that melee cavalry if needed. I'm going to start with a couple of units here. See if I can catch his artillery napping once his line gets into battle. Look at those supplies, just running out there like nobody's business. There's got to be men right behind them, no? But that's the advantage of mounted units. I can ride out here really quick and grab that. Thank you very much. Get them dismounted and back into position. All right, here comes two units of infantry out here on the outside. Get those supplies back behind my lines. This may actually work out nicely with the melee cavalry, maybe distracting some of his infantry so he can't hit me full force. But right there, there's 4,000 men, so uh, they're going to overrun this position here. So let's go ahead and come down here and cause a little distraction. He's going to overrun me here. Not a huge problem. As I hoped, I'm going to surprise his cavalry. I'm also going to surprise some of his supplies. Not his cavalry, surprises his uh, artillery and his supplies. Now he's going to send Lane back there to try to deal with that. I'm going to slow down for a minute here because there's a couple of key things I want to do. We'll let 7th Cavalry grab those guys. We're going to come in at this infantry with my cavalry. This breaks up his attack so he can't quite overrun me like he thought he would. this I will have grabbed three of his supply trains or 
supply of wagons, I guess. Not really a full train of supplies. Okay. Now let's head over this way with the 7th Cav. I think we can go back to full speed for now. And send Hood down to help with these guys. We're gonna hit that battery. Alright, let's pull them back. I think we've sufficiently messed up his attack. Though obviously it's going to cause some problems for my melee cavalry. Uh, he's going to get these supplies back. Maybe, maybe not. Alright, he gave up on that. Perfect. All right, we disrupted the attack, which is what I really wanted to do there. Another juicy set of supplies there, but I've got enough other things I'm worried about right now that I'm not gonna divert my attention on that. Cutler kind of screen to get these supplies out of here. I want to pause for just a second and see the situation. Um, all right, so he's got me by about 5,000 men. I've got him by 57 guns. Looks like I've taken out 21 of his guns already. So we, we just want to we, we want to change that to where um, I eventually have the manpower advantage in this fight. He's not going to get anywhere close to the objective. I've just got too many guns down here. Pretty much drawn Lane out of the action. All right, let's ride back in with these melee cavalry units now. I'm gonna send the seventh cap straight over this way. guys are breaking so I'm actually gonna I'm just gonna pull my melee cavalry right here just to kind of hang tight for now wait and see what he does reform my line get these guys back behind my lines get General McClellan up All right, you know what? You have done it to me for too long, sir. I'm mounting up and I'm grabbing these supplies. That should be what my fourth, fourth amount, uh, fourth batch of supplies I will have grabbed of his. All right. Now let's get him dismounted. I'm actually going to go ahead and move them over. It's going to shift some of these units over here to help with the attack. Because nothing much happened on, on this part of the line. I'm going to be careful with Cook. He's out there a little further than the rest of my units.
run the seventh cab in real quick just to hit him. And then we're going to pull him back before he gets sucked into Jones. Just want to disrupt that attack. Alright, so he was at about, what, a 5,000 man advantage or so. It's down to about four. I think we've pretty much disrupted his flank attack. I'll go ahead and speed things up here, because I know this is going to tick to the next phase here in about ten minutes. I'm going to slow it down here, because here comes... these uh, mounted infantry, we're going to go over and hit them with the uh, melee cav. Ah, he's going to run. Okay. That's fine. solid let's go to the next phase oh, we can finish the mission right here we can proceed to the next day all right let's go to next day should be able to go back in and uh, refit some of my units again I don't know what he's gonna have as far as his side of the forces go um, so he's down to just 24,800 men at this point I've got a good 10,000 man advantage, and this is where uh, he's going to attack from all sides, and I'm just going to decimate him because I've got such uh, such an advantage as far as my cavalry or my artillery goes that I'm just going to have my way with him. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be nice. It's going to be real nice. I'm not going to worry too much about reinforcing all these units because I know I've got more than enough to get the job done. So we're just going to dive into it. I hope that my initial setup is decent. Uh, and I don't have to do a ton of shifting around like I did last time. So let's pause and take a look at the situation here. I don't like this at all. This is completely pointless and there's real no, no real benefit to it. I want to draw him into this area here as much as possible. He's probably already out here, which means I'm not going to be able to hold the line. See, this was the ideal defensive position because he's crossing water in open field and I'm at the edge of the woods. But it's not going to give me that as an option because he's probably already crossed through that. The main thing I need to do is I need to just condense my line some. I guess we might have to hold out here. I want to pull my rifled artillery back. This is worthless up here, too. I would like very much to have been able to hold this line, but I have a feeling when I ride my melee cab forward, I'm going to find that he's already there. And I've got nothing really to defend with up here. If I can, yeah, maybe I can move forward and, and hold that line. I'm going to rush up there and try to hold it as best I can. Even if it means my melee cavalry's got to buy time for me. come over here uh, forgot forgot to pull one guy back all right let's shift 
Man, I just, that's what I hate about this. I had a great defensive position, and now he's resetting it, and it's gonna make me kind of fight for ground that I was already defending adequately. All right, let's pause for a second and look at the situation here. There's not a lot happening over here, but I've got to get myself in a little better position here. I gotta pull my rifled artillery back. Some of these guns up. Got to get the 24 pounders up. Sharpshooters back. Not a good spot for them. But I've got so much artillery up here that I think that's going to be enough to disrupt whatever he tries to do. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get General Keys out of here. These skirmishers are going to cease to exist. Again, I'm just going to use my melee cavalry to disrupt his advance. He's sending units up into this killing field here. This is a nice little kind of uh, zone where I can hit him from three sides. And again, these guys are just buying time. pause for a second because I'm, I'm far from ideal defensive position right now but uh, it looks like I don't even have all of my troops on the field because I'm supposed to have over 30,000 I'm supposed to have 34 so I'm waiting on reinforcements that haven't arrived yet right now he's at 18 so he's got me by about 1200 men I'm also missing I'm still missing a third of my artillery I've got another 100 artillery pieces that aren't even showing up on the battlefield right now
So the melee cavalry once again, uh, just using it to disrupt the attack, which it's done successfully. Oh boy, no, 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 we don't want to disrupt it that much. I may lose Crittenden. They're getting pulled out way too far. He's getting into my 24 pounders now. I gotta pull them back. See, all of this could have been avoided if I could have just held my initial defensive position. for a second because I think I may need to bring in some of my left flank over here uh, let's see all right so now I've got him by about 600 men so I've got the numerical advantage now man where are my reinforcements I'm missing so much of my army let's send this melee, melee cav down here A lot of these units I just built for this battle, uh, so they're brand new units with uh, low ranking officers and no experience, so I'm not real concerned about the casualties that they're taking. Alright, let's bring some of these guys out. down here in his rear. We'll suck him right into the to the objective so he can suffer maximum casualties from my artillery. again and the numbers now now I've got him by almost 3,000 men so his his army is rapidly disintegrating and then we're gonna start gobbling up some of the units that get left behind in the midst of that disintegration So 
I just I don't like how I got kind of hung out to dry with my defense, but I should have anticipated that knowing that's how this battle goes. So that's my own mistake for not preparing better for that. So this is hardly an ideal battle for me. I mean, it's going to be a win. And I'm going to decimate his army, but... I guess I just expected I was going to get more of my forces on the field than I've got. down to just 11,000 men now. I'm going to see how quickly we can take out his artillery back here. out those two units. Now I just got to be careful here because there's a limited number of options to me as far as who I can hit without running into his main line. What to melee cavalry for if not to disrupt and destroy units even if I lose some casualties along the way none of these are my I mean at least not these three these are all one star units I've got the paper color brigade here so I want to be careful with them careful with first Virginia as well we'll send Cutler in there to help out Seven minutes to go. He is down to 7,000 men. Definitely a reckless, a reckless battle on my part. Not well fought, not carefully fought. I think in hindsight, there's a lot I would do differently if I were to replay this one. And finally, the reinforcements arrive on the field. When I don't need them anymore.
Okay. Let's get Mason out of there. We're gonna go ahead and pull these guys out. They've done enough. Let's just let this one finish up. It was bloody. Um, I probably lost, I don't know, seven, eight thousand men in this battle, which is a good 25% of my force. I could probably go back and replay it and cut that casualty number in half if I did some things differently, built my army a little differently, but honestly, I'm not being that careful this time around, because uh, I knew I would win. I wasn't too worried about it. So we'll just see what the final numbers look like. I'm very interested to see how Gettysburg's going to go, but that'll probably be another week or so before we get to that one. We have to advance so uh, we've got to take the last part of this battle now we've got to uh, move forward and take the objectives back with a three to one advantage so this is really not going to be much to this part and then we actually go right into uh, the follow-up battle to this uh, so I'm actually going to stop right there um, and, and we'll make a part two where we kind of do the follow-up and then we also do the follow-up uh, battle to this um, so uh, I know it's kind of an awkward place to stop, but it's already been a really long video, and I don't want to make this like an hour and a half. So we'll stop right there. Uh, we'll come back with phase two later on in a day or two, uh, along with the following battle. I'll keep forgetting what it's called, but I know there's another battle that comes right after this down near Fredericksburg. So uh, as always, let me know your thoughts. I know there's a lot I could have done better. If you have a specific suggestion that you'd like to share, not only with me, but anybody else who might be fighting this battle, to let them know what they should do, then uh, please, by all means, share that, and we'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.